Hello, uh, my name is Kimberly Hilton and today I'm going to be making a brush drying rack um, for my brushes so that um, when I dry them they can hang upside down and the, um, and the water won't collect in the furl here and I just think that that would help keep my bristles um, in better shape. I normally lay them on a dish drying rack and horizontally like this, but you know, it, it works fairly well, but I've been wanting to get one that's vertical. So um, I thought, well, why don't I just try to make one? So I had this idea that I will take a container and I was just looking in my kitchen cabinet for different things that I might could use. And I had the idea about the coffee can. Um, uh, this is the lid to a coffee can. And I thought about using the coffee can, but I thought, well, you know, it's not going to have ventilation, so it might not dry very well. But I thought, well, uh, why don't I get out the hot glue gun and glue it to some sort of base that can stand up and um, then my brushes can, can hang over the side. This is, uh, this is a lid that I experimented on. It's my prototype, as, as you might call it. Um, and I just cut um, slits in it with, a, um, with one of these knobs. If you do this project, you know, um, be, be careful. And this is not a video for kids. So, um, but if you do this, or if you're, kid, you're a kid and you want one of these, you might need to get a parent to help you. But, um, or actually to do it for you. But anyway, um, I'll show you how this is going to work. So, um, I've tried making slits that are like stars with three, um, with three holes. And those worked pretty good. Um, let's see. The camera's not really in the right position, but um, but the brush kind of goes a little wonky, and I didn't like that. So um, I tried it with the two hole, and the brush holds better with just I mean two slits in the hole. So I'm gonna try that. I can always add another one later. This one I kind of. Um, overdid experimenting on so this is kind of I might be able to use it but I think it's garbage but so I went and found another coffee lid and I'm going to um, use that one and then I'm going to hot glue um, the, the lid there and then I'm going to turn it over like this and it's going to be able to hold my brushes now um it a little it, it's a little flimsy because it's plastic if you want to do use a glass jar you could but um, I don't really want to use glass in the studio things get knocked around sometimes um, but I thought well I could fill it with something heavy I could fill it with art supplies or I could fill it with something pretty like some glass beads or some seashells or whatever you can make it pretty if you want to or you could glue it to a, um, a plate and um, that way when the brushes are drying, they can drip down over the plate. Um, the options are, you know, whatever you, you think will be best for you and whatever kind of materials that you actually have on hand. So with that out of the way, I'm ready to um, kind of get started and... Uh, and you can follow along in the process. And if you think it's a good idea, you can make one for yourself. Um, I'm not 100% sure how it's going to work because I've never made one of these before. But uh, I, think it's, I think it's a good idea. So let me move this out of the way. And um, I have my, I hope you can see it. Okay, so I have my uh, lid here, and um, I think the first thing I'm going to do, because the last one I made, I didn't have anything to protect my hand, and I was holding my hand here when I cut, and I realized that's very dangerous, and I don't really 
want to recommend anybody else do that. So, um, what I'm going to do is glue this down first. Then I think I'll be able to um, cut this and my hand will be protected with that lid. So, um, that will, I think that will work. So, this is just a, a hot glue gun. It doesn't matter what kind of glue gun you got. I love hot glue because it's fast and easy. It dries really quick. And um, it's just a handy thing to have um, when you're making things. Now, um, I majored in art, uh, and I took a lot of different kinds of art classes. I did um, one on experimental design, and, and I did sculpting classes, and 3D art, painting, uh, drawing, you know, lots of different, lots of different art classes. So, um, I use, I use, you know, the stuff that I had to learn in art school to kind of like, uh, just, I don't know. Uh, I made sculptures, so I learned how to use, um, all kinds of different materials and sculptures are, is not only just about like, um, like taking a piece of clay or a piece of rock and sculpting something. It um, it's also can be about um, taking found objects and adding to them or taking things away. And um, you can you can just experiment and do all kinds of things. I've seen people make sculptures out of tires. So. Um, Art is about creativity, and for me, it's about having fun. And I also enjoy uh, just making, just making things. It's really fun to be creative. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on my cuts. So I'm just going to take this and cut it down straight. And I, my hand is protected because because of the thing so that was I think that was a good idea and I'm going to try to um, just make another straight line just in the form of you know an x or a cross and I'm doing it right here between these two ridges so that kind of helps me get them evenly spaced so I'm going to be able to make eight and there I'm testing it with this big um, flat brush and it works good so I'm ready to do the next one you can make as many of these as you want and I'm just going to make another uh, X shape try to uh, I think it's a good idea to try to get the um, the cross, the, the, the lines even. I hope this will hold, I think it will hold a variety of brushes. If you want it to specifically hold smaller brushes, then make your X's smaller. I'm not getting my lines exactly right, so I thought about measuring them before I started, but <laughs> I was going to take this little circle maker and go around and draw circles so that I could stay inside the lines, but that didn't happen. Uh, sometimes I just get in there and get messy, but that's okay. You can always you can always make another one if you um, want to make it a uh, neater. I do want this to look nice, I, but it's important that it's functional for me. More more important that it's functional than that it looks nice. And I'm about done with my with my um, cut. 
cuts here. Now you don't have to make eight, but I think eight's a good balance. It's, um, let's see. So now I'm going to, see I did this one earlier and it's still got glue on it. So I went and got another one. Okay, so there's that and it may get top heavy and tip over if it's not balanced. So that's why I was thinking you could either glue it to another coffee lid like this. I don't know if that would make it harder to get the brushes in. It might be make it harder to get the brushes in. So um, what I thought was I would just, you can fill this with anything. I keep these in my studio to hold um, different items. I put, um, you know, sometimes I put pencils in them. Sometimes I put paint uh, brushes in them. Sometimes I put, I have one with sponges in it. <laughs> I'm kind of a frugal crafter. Uh, I like to, I like to save money where I can. And, um, you know, this also indulges my create, creative side. So, um, I, I do enjoy, these are good containers. Um, I put sponges in these too, because it's nice to have sponges in your art room when you do watercolors. But anyway, just to be pretty, I'm going to put some of these. Paintbrushes were smaller, you could just um, hold your paintbrushes upright in that if <laughs> if you are to, and that's the, that's pretty. Or you could uh, use old um, beans or peas or something from the kitchen. But I'm just going to screw that on there, and so now that's that's how that looks. Um, if I had it filled up, it might look nicer. You could put it on a plate to dry. But um, let me show you how this is going to look when we fill it with brushes. So I never use more than three or four brushes at a time. So I think this will this will work for all my brush drying needs. Maybe I don't want to use the glass beads because when I turn it over... It's gonna rattle. There's one, and this is a number four um, a mop or quill brush. And this is a number one flat right here. So I'm gonna put that there. And then this is a number five round. I'll put that one there. And this is a, well, let's try to use a big one. This is a big, uh, I don't know, one and a half, one and a half inch brush. I'll put that one here. So, oh, I didn't get that. That one's a little bit too big for that square. Maybe I need to cut my square a bit. But, um, I need to cut it a little bit bigger. Oops, there. Okay, so that, that's fine. And now, um, that is the biggest brush I own. So, I could just have one that's bigger. And there's a flat brush. And, um, here's another smaller flat brush. And let's see. This is a very small, this is a number three Rigger Cotman watercolor brush. And um, you, you might have to do some adjusting. That one doesn't, wants to be a little wonky, but uh, I 
or maybe make a couple smaller. You could always make a couple smaller ones in between the bigger ones there. But that one's kind of a little bit wonky, so let's just put this one in here. The smaller ones, see that one wants to go wonky, so maybe I should have um, made some smaller ones, and maybe I will. Maybe I'll go in between them and cut some smaller X's. Now, let me get one more brush. To put on this side here. And there, it's full. <laughs> and uh, my brushes will be able to will be able to um, drip dry very easily. Yeah, let me show you. See, and it don't look bad. If you want just to leave them on the table, which I wouldn't recommend that because it might ruin your table, put it on another coffee, coffee lid. But, you know, some of them are out past the the lid so maybe you want to get a um a larger a larger container for um or just a small plate this is a old dinner plate that i use as a uh, palette sometimes as you can see it's got uh it's got watercolor paint on it i used um I use this for a color wheel palette so I can put the colors, uh, arrange the colors in the shape of the color wheel so that, um, so that I can, um, you know, uh, look at the color wheel and be able to pick out what colors to use, um, that, that are, um, that look good together. Like you can mix the complements and they make good neutrals or you can mix colors that are side by side on a color wheel and they will have color harmony or you can tell where your um, primary colors are. It's just handy to have um, your paints in a circular, um, a circular format, I think. And, um, you know, circular palettes can be expensive. I have a plastic one and a smaller ceramic one, but a dinner plate works really well, and you can just put your paints on the, the end if you want to. But, um, I probably, uh, I'm probably not going to use this one as a drying rack, uh, for the, um, for this drying, uh, rack, because it has the paint on it, but, I do like that it's plain, and I don't really want to use this glass plate, but you can use whatever. Um, but I think it's nice. I think it's going to work. Uh, if you make one of these, uh, let me know what you think. And I think it was simple to make, and I think you could um, probably have these kind of items on hand. And if you don't have that kind of jar, you could use a different kind of... A different kind of um, container as long as it has room for your brushes um, to hang down but hey I think that's nice I hope you like it and um, if you like this video uh, let me know in the comments and uh, please like and subscribe to my channel and I hope you have a nice day and happy painting